Good evening, friends. Stephen Benone here with Israeli News Live. And Hal Turner once again is reporting some very strange activities uh, on his uh, platform here. Bulletin update, 1.21 p.m. See bottom China deploying troops into Europe. Now, at least that's the speculation behind a uh, some maneuvers of Chinese planes that are flying uh, over Serbia. Began late Friday night. U.S. East Coast time when a series of four China People's Liberation Army Y-20 troop transport aircraft were observed flying toward Southeast Europe. Those planes began landing in Serbia. Shortly thereafter, the original four planes were joined by at least two additional Y-20 transport planes. The identification numbers of the planes are as follows. According to the public sources, each plane is capable of carrying either 300 troops or 110 paratroopers. Each flight radar shows the first four. Uh, the final two were also seen doing zigzag maneuvers at 3,500 feet northwest of the capital, exactly the type of maneuvers and altitude one might expect to see from planes deploying paratroopers. For the first time in a long time, the world is now seeing China Communist Party force projection in its and it is not known yet why the troops have been uh, been sent or what their purpose is. The initial speculation is they're, they're being sent to secure uh, vast lithium deposits in Serbia, but that is just a wild guess. Whatever is going on, possibly World War III, just expanded greatly. More info if I get it. Now, that's what how Turner is reporting. And, of course, as you can see here, here on the map of Serbia uh, and... Um, the area in which we are looking at is, ooh, do, 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 do. let me find it again on the map here. Um, I actually had, here we go, right here. It's right in this area right here. That city right there, Belgrade, uh, Serbia, is where uh, these planes were seen at there. If you back out from Belgrade, you know, you got Romania to the east, Hungary to the north, Poland a little bit more north, than just north of uh, Slovakia there. So, good question. Kind of told you, I kind of been wondering if this war is not going to expand to include Romania and Poland anyway, but I don't really know. Uh, Veterans Today also says total blackout, U.S. general captured, leading Azov Nazis and Maripol confirmations coming in. Now, even with the confirmation that I got, it was not a confir confirmation of the Lieutenant General, Roger Claudier. Uh, so I want to make sure I make that clear. That was not the confirmation that I got. I was told that it was confirmed a high-ranking U.S. Uh, military official was captured. and uh, But it was not specified whether or not it was Roger Claudier. Uh, in fact, I was uh, given two different ranks. One was general, then it's, uh, the message was no correction, lieutenant colonel. Now, that might be a little bit more believable. A lieutenant colonel was captured, but then again, it could have been meant lieutenant general. don't know. I'm not really sure as of yet, so I don't want to say. But I know veterans today is claiming that they are. They cite this particular Russian source, Um KP.RU daily, but that doesn't even say that in their, in, their, in their report either. They do speak about the shooting down of the military helicopters that were trying to come in to do a rescue operation. So on the morning of April 5th, another attempt to, by Kiev regime to evacuate leaders of the Azov Nationalist Battalion was thwarted near Maripol. Two Ukrainian Mi-8 helicopters which tried to break through to the city from the sea were shot down from manned portable anti-aircraft missile systems. Igor Kanashkinov, spokesman for the Russian Defense Ministry, said at a briefing. Note that this was the third attempt by Kiev to pull its war criminals from the crime scene, but it ended up the same as the previous ones. The helicopters did not reach Maripol. Now, here we go. I'll bring you down here to the general here. Here he is right here where he is speaking about these things, of course, in the Russian language. But uh, the whole thing is, though, is that um, we don't have, there's, there's actually, in this report here, the helicopters never made it to the scene. So to say that these, uh, these leaders were being taken out would be uh, just an assumption. Now, they do talk about in the article, 
Minister of Defense noted that the, pro the proposals were cons uh, constantly ignored by the Kiev regime and appeal once again from 6 a.m. Moscow time. Ukrainian servicemen were asked to stop hostilities, lay down their arms, and go along the agreed route to the territory controlled by the Kiev regime. He also stressed that in any case, Mirapol would soon be liberated from the nationalists by units of the Russian armed forces in the Donetsk People's Republic. Unless they were captured during that time because they had refused to lay down their arms and surrender, that would be the only way that I could say that the article might imply that they could have been captured. And I don't really know the answer to that. That's, that's still highly speculative. Uh, finally, uh, you know, we tried to open this story up for you. Uh, and we want to turn now to a CBS News gonna play just real quick, just a little short clip of this. The Biden crime family being uh, exposed more and more by CBS News. Listen up. By Catherine Herridge, who spoke with a top Republican senator who for years has been investigating the business dealings of the president's brother and son. CBS News has learned that more than 150 transactions involving either Hunter or James Biden's global business affairs were flagged as concerning by U.S. banks for further review. Some of those concerns included large wire transfers. This is the uh, After a nearly three-year investigation, Republican Senator Chuck Grassley told CBS News he believes the president's younger brother, James, was instrumental in Hunter Biden's Chinese business ventures. I think James... And there you go. That's just with China, but then you get into all these other ones as well. Um, kind of got some interesting news. I've been getting sent my way about Michael Flynn and that group there. I uh, didn't have a chance to put it together here. It just happened to come across my mind uh, as I'm doing these uh, reports here. But it has to do more with a one world religion. Uh, we're going to be investigating that a little bit further. Stars and Stripes, Japan, Philippines, seek pact to further defense cooperation. You guys remember I talked to you about how that uh, China is strong-arming the entire Pacific region. And even we are feeling that in the Philippines. Already we've been evacuating, uh, downsizing our presence in Taiwan. We're not going to defend Taiwan. And I've been told as well that will happen with the Philippines. So now that Japan and the Philippines are trying to bolster some ties together because they know they're about to be left on their own. Kind of interesting. Uh, I find that anyway. But uh, uh, And I have been told that uh, China will take Taiwan, even though we were expecting that to happen back in December. It's not off the books yet been told uh, now with the new updated time frame I think it's late summer summer either September I forget which which time frame they're looking at now but uh, I don't see China waiting much longer and I do see global war on the horizon oh yeah yeah not good empshield.com let me just I just say it guys just as a reminder um, doesn't never hurt uh, if you want to um, here we go, shop there. Like I said, everything, solar, wind protection as well. You name it, these guys have got it. But whatever you click on that you decide, decide that you need, uh, add it to your cart. You'll have your price there. But once you get to that cart, you can uh, go and save an additional 50 bucks by just using the INL50 code. Apply that code, and you will get $50 off of an EMP shield. I know quite a few of you, because of the threat of the wars or things like that that are going on, have been taking advantage of this opportunity. I certainly strongly uh, encourage it. And to me, it's just a way to insure what you do have. Um, that's the way I kind of look at it, like an insurance policy. We thank you, though. We thank you for your support of this broadcast. And um, hopefully tomorrow we'll be putting together, I don't know if I'll be doing the video with my wife, uh, but we got uh, several other issues to address, uh, so hopefully uh, there'll be more things for you to listen to tomorrow evening. Blessings to you. Thank you for listening. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Good afternoon.